this is not a test. What you are witnessing is live radio 106.5 FM. And this is the Indie Bow Radio Show with your host, Mitch Barnes, Kel G, Free, and I am DJ KDL. Let's get into it. Radio live on WPPM LP Philadelphia 106.5 FM and online at phillyking.org radio listen. Also on the app Tune In Radio, you can uh, search WPPM or Philly King. Yeah, Kel. Yes, sir. Introduce the guest. Today we got my man, good friend of mine from way back. We go far. My man Kamari Ellis. The Finance Rebel. Yeah, yeah. What's up, y'all? What's going What's up, on, bitch? man? What's going on? How y'all doing? You <laughs> <laughs> doing all right? <laughs> Got his very white on. Yeah. <laughs> Give him your social media info, you know, for all the listeners out there so they can check up on you. That's the uh, Finance Rebel across the board. F-I-N-A-N-C-E-R-E-B-E-O. I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so give the listeners a little background about yourself and what you're doing. Oh, man. Um... I've been doing finance, accounting, investments for the last 20 years. Um, and, and over those years, I'm seeing not a whole lot's changed. Yeah. Especially sure. with a lot of, a lot of our people. Um, so I guess one way we were going to talk about black wealth. Right, so right. So I started talking about black wealth a lot. And it all stemmed, believe it or not, from <clears> me <throat> doing radio. Mm -hmm. I used to do radio on the other side of the AM dial. I had, a, uh, I had a show, and people always call out, well, what do we need to do? What do we need to do about the community? And I got thinking about it. Well, one thing we need to do is start pulling our money. Yeah. Second thing we need to do is stop spending our money stupidly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Third thing we need <laughs> to do <laughs> is, is, is start thinking about legacy in, in, in long term right. and things like that. And, you know, I bought y'all up here been doing what y'all doing because y'all got a movement going on right now. Y'all might not be getting paid what you want to get paid, but y'all looking at it from down the road. Right, right. And so sometimes you got to put that work in without getting a check. That's a legacy. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You can pass it on to somebody else or be helpful to somebody else. And it might not be all about you, but it's about the community. It's about the fan. Right. So, you know, I start talking more. I start writing more. I start doing more radio. And I found a lot of people agree with what I was saying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fast forward. Became a financial advisor, started doing some other investment type stuff. I found though, because my name is the Financial Rebel, right? I'm a rebel. You've known me forever, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me to go left and go right. Somebody tell me to go up and go down. That's just my natural nature. But I find that a lot of times in the investment world, the finance world, that people are giving bad advice. Yeah. And so I know you're affiliated with some can of the folks I, out there. Can I ask you a question? Yes, um, sir. So where do you think that bad advice mostly come from? To be honest, yeah. people want to make money. No, no. I'm saying like family, friends. Oh, well, that's all. Stranger. I, I, know, I know exactly what you're you, talking about. Like, where do yeah. you think the, the bad advice? Basically, who, who, who shouldn't you listen to? <laughs> <laughs> so, I know what you're about. so, there is a lot of misinformation in our community. Okay. All right. So, there's a family member of mine. I don't want to say who it is. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. But. Allegedly. <laughs> they got a mortgage that they haven't paid in years, right? It's the second mortgage. And okay. he says, well, I got a first mortgage. I gotta pay the second mortgage. Huh? I'm like, who told you that? And they said such and such and such and such. And I said, we fam, you never asked me that question. Right. I would have told you that's wrong. Okay. So now that person is in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'll be able to do something, you know, to help. But right. I don't know. But you know, it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of things folk around here, and. I'm not blaming or judging anybody, right? Because when you look at our plight, when you look at our community, you got to do all the history. Right. You know, a lot of times people just want to hear it now. They don't want to go back in the day. They don't want to talk about slavery. They don't want to talk about civil rights, but it all played a part in some way, shape, or form right. to right. what's going on right now. Yeah. And okay. so when you look at all that, it makes sense why we get a condition we get to a certain degree. Yeah. But now we know better. We got more access. We got brothers on the radio. We got brothers on the internet, sisters too. No this, um, and now we can do more things than we ever could before. But those people, you know, I callous say them out there, mm -hmm. they still want to hold us down. So you got to be smart about things. Yeah, you got to be smart about it. Now, what could somebody like when you say bad advice or stuff like that? You know, as far as investments, 
what could somebody look for? Like, if someone's giving you advice, what would you look for? Like, ah, uh, no, I shouldn't really, you know, deal with what this guy is saying. Like, what are keys to look for or whatever? Um, I don't, well, yeah, red flags, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I, well, you, know, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd too, right? <laughs> I listen to what everybody, anybody is saying. Any, I'm listening to what everything a person is saying to. Okay. And when I hear inconsistencies, I jump all over them. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm trained, right? right? I do this, I read this, I, I live it, so it might be not as hard. But when you feel, I think a person can feel when a person is just out for a check. Yeah. They try to rush through the project. Mm -hmm. Anybody trying to rush through something, normal, most times, out of ten, nine times out of ten, they trying to sell you a bag of goods. Yeah. If it's too good, if it's too good to be true, like I can make all this money and I've never lost money. Right. BS. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loses money at some point in shape form. Yeah. Even though boys on the corner tell you that's just a life we live. Mm -hmm. You gotta roll with it. That don't change. That's that's around the world. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody loses money at some point. When Bernie Madoff got locked up, he was out for a long time because they thought his performance was just that good. He was making that much money for folks. Yeah. It's like, nah, something's wrong here. Yeah. Everybody loses money at some point. Or something happens right. at some point. Yeah. So, you know, again, if it sounds too good, run away from it. Run away from right. it. Right. Yeah. yeah, like on social media, uh, give me $200 and I give you uh, $2,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the Nigerian boys send you the emails. Like, I got I got $5 million for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you send me $500. Yeah, yeah, no like, joke. Really? That, that sounds a little okay. weird, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, if it's, it's too good to be true, nine times ten it is. And... Uh, I heard some somebody was telling me, uh, uh, never trust anyone that's trying to sell you something. Would you agree, agree to that? Well, that's kind of hard, right? Because we all do sales. Okay. Some way, shape, or form. Even you, you, you up here on the mic, and you push it in the arch. So sometimes that term sales gets a bad rap. Okay. Everybody's selling, right? Even when you, I don't know if y'all married or what, you had to sell your lady. To get with you, it's a sale process. Okay. Right? That's, what, that's what my uh, inspector said one time. I was like, she went to college and uh, never used a, a degree. I hope she ain't let you get mad. But anyway, <laughs> he was like, what? I said, he said, when she went to school for, I said, marketing. He said, what you talking about? She marketed herself to you, didn't, didn't that's she? Right. But then I'm like, <laughs> she ran right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. So, I mean, I, I think. We can sell like a snake oil salesman at the, at the used car lot. No, this is used car folks, but right. sometimes they want to sell you a lemon. And they got that <laughs> reputation. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, check people's resumes. Yeah. You right. know, see, see where they've been, see who they know, see who they connected with, see if they stand up people. I mean, that's that, that really ain't that hard. It's a little easier now with the uh, yeah, yeah. internet. And that's stuff. Right. That's But, you know, you got those folks on the internet. That's made their life look like <laughs> they yeah. party hard. Yeah, right, day. right. Yeah, and they yeah. like, no, I ain't got no problems. I'm on the beach today. Mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Now, what about uh, the thing I hear about uh, investing in black banks? What is your opinion on that? I think we got to invest in all black, all black everything, like Jay said. Um, not, just, not just banks, you say? Not just banks. Everything. Banks are part of it, though, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to run it down, black folks in America spend about one2 trillion dollars a year, all right? Now we got black folks around the world, right? We have the most money out of all black people around the world, in Africa, Haiti, wherever you wherever you can think of their black people, we have the most amount of black, the most amount of money out of all you, those folks. You mean American blacks? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have a lot of money, but we kind of, we don't use it the right way. And there's some other factors in there too. But yes, we have to bank black. Mm. It, it's very important to bank black. Banks are the cornerstones of our community. If if we have a strong black bank, we can have a higher home ownership. If we have a strong black bank in our community, we can have um, more small businesses being created. Mm. Uh, I have a relationship with the black bank here in Philly. It's called United Bank of Philadelphia. A lot of people don't realize we have a black bank here in Philadelphia. Yeah, we do. Yeah, there's one yeah. right there. Nah, I don't know what. Never mind, go ahead. <laughs> With Plaza Yeah, yeah, you yeah. said it. That's it. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to give nobody a commercial plug. Yeah, 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 you're right. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but we, got, we have a black bank here. There's a lot of black banks. I believe there's about 23 nationwide. Yeah. Okay. Right, so if you look at a lot of the other banks, what I call PWI, predominantly white institutions, they have historically a lot of times 
done malicious and bad and heinous things to the black community. Right. So if you look at the whole mortgage debacle, real estate debacle we had a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, that wasn't a legend. <laughs> That's facts. I'm just going to say that, that legend right there. <laughs> it's facts. It's They're getting sued. Hey. Right. But um, a lot of that was directed towards the black community. Mm -hmm. Right. So everybody can't avoid doing business with what I call BWI Bank or White Bank. But it's in our best interest to try to bank black as much as possible. Okay. It's in our interest to try to do business with black folks as much as possible. And I ain't even on no racist type yeah. thing. Every other community does this. The Jews do it, the Koreans do it, everybody does this. They all understand that they gotta take care of your home right. first. Um, but we don't. Right. You know, the nation Islam said a long time ago, do for self. Mm -hmm. We gotta do for self. Because ain't nobody else gonna look out for us. Right. When you look when you look and I ain't trying to take over y'all shit. No, no, no. no this is something I'm passionate about. You good. When Dr. Martin Luther King marched on Washington in nineteen sixty three, black unemployment was double that of the national average, basically the white folks, right? What do you think it is today? Probably the same. It's still double. <laughs> so we talking 50 plus years where That's crazy. Ain't nothing moved. Yeah. Now a lot of has changed, you know, I, I don't want to paint the picture that folks are still getting lynched every day. They still getting lynched though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mentally, <laughs> mentally lynched now. And physically, but yeah. mentally and physically. Good right. point there. Okay. But things are a lot better. Y'all had the brother on just now that's doing this Young thing boy. here in Philly. Doug, yeah. Doug, good music. But his hustle game's right. Yeah. He's talking about he's doing everything himself, but he's making sure he's staying relevant. Right. He's using all these social media platforms. Sadly, a lot of our OGs is like, I can't get on that Facebook. I can't get on that Twitter. I'm about to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Better learn. But it's millions of dollars being made. I know some of these cats, it's millions of dollars being made yeah. every day yeah. on the internet, whether it be social media or whatever, Amazon or whatever. So we got to learn the game. The opportunity is there. And then we got to take that money and put it back in our community. Like Ross said, buy black the block. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, before you said, uh, also, um, you used to do a music blog and stuff too, right? Yeah, blog. No, there. I got a hip hop. I had a hip hop blog. I okay. love hip hop, man. Yeah. I mean, you already know that. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. a hip like hop Tuesday. Shout out to the hip hop Tuesday's crew. Yeah. I'm doing it with a brother who's one of the original members of uh, 100X. Oh, okay. Yeah, my okay. man, Preen. We stopped doing it. I was having issues at my office at the time. Um, SoundCloud was taking our stuff down because we was playing music. We had the rights to it. Uh, I needed yeah. a radio station like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on, folks, SoundCloud, how, how, was this recent? Because I know that they uh, let you uh, monetize your music on SoundCloud now. Well, right. it wasn't mine. So, like, if I wasn't do we wasn't doing our indie, but we would play, like, stuff that everybody ain't listening to. Like, we might play, um, dang, what's the brother down, Snap Down? That's P, somebody? No, not Master P, but... But a South artist. A South yeah. artist. Okay. a lot of times, East Coast folks, we got an East Coast bias. Right, like, right. We won't admit it, but all we want to hear is Jay Nas, you know, maybe a couple other cats. We're right. not really checking for some of the down South folks. Andre sure. Trey Stacks is a dope MC. Yeah. Right. Scarface is a dope MC. Even Rick Ross, the fat boy can rap. Right. But yeah. a lot of times, we got a bias towards Southern rappers. Well, so, but we were playing... Anything new that came out that was necessarily indie, okay, but might have been indie. I got it. Might have been un un so they, they just yeah. y'all, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So you know, but we were talking about everything. We we said we talking about hip hop. We talking about the world through the hip hop lens. Because okay. I mean, you can talk about everything in the world through hip hop. Hip hop has changed the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, to me, hip hop has probably done the, the best thing for race relations right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, yeah. yeah. Wu Tang and KRS One being celebrated in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> like I, re I remember up in Millersville, right? When um, Black Thought was up there. Yeah. I got the meeting one time and he was just rapping. He wasn't even on yet. Mm -hmm. They kind of find out they got to go to Germany to get put on. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And, wow. and to me, the roots still don't get enough love in Philly. Yeah. They they, don't. In my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times in, in certain uh, aspects of the industry, they don't, you know, as far as musically, they still got that I mean, label at, like. At first or now? I still feel now they don't they don't I, get a lot. Wow. I don't hear a lot of their spins on major radio outlets for any music. They always putting out joints. Yeah. yeah. Now you could argue that they internationally they known sing. though. They are. They are. As a band. But they had that was their. I don't want to say gimmick because it's not a gimmick. That's what I understand. Like, they probably that was their that was their life. That direct, yeah. Okay. But Thorn is a spinner. Like now, yes. And they got good songs, but a lot of times they don't get put on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. 
And they put on a lot of people. But you know what's thorough? They, they had a picnic every year. They do? Yeah. yeah. And that joint's expanding to Brooklyn now. Oh, yeah. yeah. They do too. Yeah. yeah. So, one here and one in New York, uh, man. And, and that's the thing. Like, um, a lot of artists, sometimes you have to find other lanes to do things. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like that picnic been going on for a while and, and it's big and now you saying it's going to New York like yeah that's major like, that's major and everybody in the like, way, did did it come did it come yet or was it this month or that's last June month? June oh June okay yeah. 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 yeah I think they do it June here in October in New York that's yeah. dope that's dope Indivo Radio every Saturday from six to eight p.m. live on one hundred six point five. So yeah, so like uh, another thing I want to talk to you about, like when we got in the whole lane about the music or whatever, like you know, artists doing their craft and you know trying to promote their music and making it a business. Right. So right. what do you think about that? I mean, again, I was impressed with y'all last. You know, Dub, Dub, yeah. shout out to my man Dub. I was, I was really impressed by him because he gets it. Yeah. Right. He knows he has to constantly make music. Mm -hmm. Confident. Yeah. He's confident exactly, and he knows he's got to put it out. Yeah. You got some artists, man, they they making music and they just sitting on it. Yeah. Man, what you doing? <laughs> Please don't I'm not I'm not gonna say no things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we ain't gonna get to that. <laughs> like what you what you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean whacking I mean because the other thing is some artists they shouldn't be artists, right? Yeah. The yeah. fastest way to find that out is put it out to the market and you'll you'll find out. Yeah. Because yeah. I heard one of y'all say you can't always go to one of your friends. And yeah, I like, said that. Because they lie to you because they do. Yeah. Out of love. Family like, and friends. You cannot. I mean, it's love. You can, but you really can't. Yeah. They not going to say it to you. Yo, that joint is trash. And you know what's crazy about that? Like, I struggled with that for a while, but I, I feel as though if someone asked me my eyes of pain, I got to tell them. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't help them if I sit here and lie to right. you. Right. And, right. and I don't get into the uh, trash, not trash. I, be, I get into the the beat banging, the hook banging, but yeah, the lyrics this. Give them a the lyrics, the the lyrics, the lyrics mm -hmm. tight, but you take too long. To, to, like, all right, listen. With me and with a lot of people, man, with, with artists, we just gonna get to artists real quick. If you ain't got somebody head banging in the first 15 seconds, something ain't right. Yeah. Now, I know some people got like this new style, they like let the, let the uh, drone rock for like a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, and before they really get into it, but the only pr people that really, Master that was like Wu Tang, you know the beats banging so bad, bad. It's just like you. But that was a nostalgia play though, right? Because they doing Kung Fu Theater. They doing, yeah, yeah. And it's and, 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 and they building up to it. It's yeah. coming in. But now, whereas though the artists they come, Madonna does. It. Yeah. This is your, this your favorite artist today. Tomorrow somebody drop a verse. That's your favorite verse next week. These bulls rocking. You rocking with them. This chick and drop this song. You got to catch the 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 uh, the, the listeners or you know the consumers. Attention within 15 seconds, period. So, yeah. you know, but uh, my, 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 what I wanted to ask you was uh, as far as with the uh, like the music, the artists and the business, do you believe that it's some good, really, really, really good artists out here, but they just can't, they're not business people? You kind of understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, and someone's that, someone that's a real good artist. And you know they, they get they some mix master they rocking but they they don't have that business sense well they might not even want it they just want to be an artist what would you say what would you us uh, advise them to do they good but they, they need business they good right so but, but they're so, not business minded so i think a lot of artists have brought into this idea that if you're an artist you don't have to make money oh uh, yeah and i hear, <laughs> I, hear yeah. Jay, I hear jay talk about it that a lot that's not true yeah right? so a lot of times people People buy into these stories, right? But cool. <laughs> yeah, let's right. let's ride with it. You know, okay. mm -hmm. you're not you're not a good business person. You don't understand contracts. You don't understand um, studio time. You don't understand nothing. Yeah. You just know you just want to go and rock. Right. You got to find somebody that you trust and that's qualified to help you on the business side. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a good word. Qualified. Qualified. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's really serious. Yeah. Because because Uncle Jim Jim just because he know everybody in the city. And he go to all the clubs, he slap all the hands, and he get you in free, and he got all the ice in the cars, and he and he got that bread. Don't mean Uncle Jim Jim is a good manager. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know a, what I mean? a, lot of, a lot of times cats want to put their homies on, but I think if you look at LeBron and what he did with his peoples, right, his homie went to college. Right. And so he got his homie ready. His homie saw what was going on. His homie went to college, figured it out, and said, you know what, I'm going to be right here. And LeBron hired all his peoples. Right. 
I mean, LeBron is a business owner, right? Yeah. He said they're going to handle uh, LeBron the brand or brand LeBron, whatever it's called. Gotcha. And, and so, but the guy got ready. And then they just went to the next level. Right. A lot of times we don't get that shot. I mean, no, no diss, right? But we look at a cat like AI. AI probably needed somebody around him. And I'm using AI as a basketball player. I agree with you. AI, AI hip hop. Right? Yeah. yeah I agree so AI probably needed somebody that he respected. I'm not saying he didn't or he did. But yeah, I read an article that he did. Somebody did make, put some bread up for him when he turned a certain age. Right. He getting well, he's getting that fit. Yeah. Right. But he blew through a whole lot. Of <laughs> yeah, he got, he got a whole bunch more than that. <laughs> Thank God they put that bread up for him. And I believe his wife was uh, behind that. Okay. And she's been, she been a rider for him. She was a day one with them for a long time and you know they still together and they went through a lot yeah um, shout out to black love <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but you know you gotta ask somebody that you trust and that's qualified right. um that's that's really able and capable to handle the business right 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 and don't want to be uh don't want to be an artist like you they gotta have a whole different mind you about to drop the shit line <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll be dancing all over your videos <laughs> <laughs> no not really i mean I'm just playing for real, but yeah, but you that's really serious, want yeah though. you really want someone that that that's that's just gonna be focused on the business yeah because I mean I mean not distracted by the, I mean if you, know, the about, light. if you think about Chris Light he I mean he was in a couple of videos but yeah yeah, yeah. I ain't he, heard nobody talk bad about Chris no Light. no he was yeah. he was about his business man yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, you ain't never seen really yeah, like right. in the yeah. uh, you seen him here and there right like exactly. I said right yeah. but it, he wasn't there so yeah. videos and that's no diss the, yeah, the, the buff yeah. or Jermaine supposedly yeah that's they lane they, they could do that they could dance you know yeah <laughs> probably be dancing in the, in the, in the business room like yeah. it's still handling, <laughs> <laughs> it's still handling the business like <laughs> so check. yeah I mean but artists artists nowadays gotta realize that this is their time yeah they don't need no middleman. They don't mean nothing, but they just gotta they gotta be willing to keep that bread right. right yeah. And if, you know, a lot of it is, excuse me, out the trunk or hand to hand, so they not paying no taxes on it. But as soon as they start to get some steam, yeah. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna be not. Yeah, yeah. So and so, they gotta treat it like a business. Right. Like a yeah. lot of them don't think that. Like you said earlier, like people just want to rap, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Like you, this is the music business. You, know, you gotta treat it like a business. If you operate like a business, then you can see some returns before a big return. Right. You know, so right. like, you know. I mean, but honestly, I mean, there's a lot of cats who, who's made it off of streaming, um, being on iTunes and a couple other platforms, and they can make a good amount of money. They may not be Drake or Jay or Nas, but some of them can knock down six figures pretty easily if they down it. Yeah. And they got their business together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so definitely. six figures ain't nothing to laugh at. From Shorty, that's that's been on the blocks, moving rocks. So, right. yeah. I mean, I, I think you gotta you gotta look like I'm a, I'm a big Joe Buttons fan, right? I right. can say big, but I'm a Joe Buttons fan. That dude hasn't really had any major successes except for Pump It Up. Right? Yeah, but he's still relevant. Now he's genius because he knows how to maneuver in social media and regular media. But he does a lot of local stuff. Yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah. You know what's crazy? To keep it a honey with you. Joe Buttons was the first person I ever seen making money off the internet, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm dead serious. I read an article, he had a glad top in front of him. I, this was this was foreign to me. I'm like, this Joe Buttons, you supposed to be on stage. Yeah. But the whole article was about how he went from, I guess, allegedly falling off. To no, he on the internet making his. He's still on there. They got yeah. a podcast. I mean, he was like, the first one really yeah. doing that podcast. Okay, so he, he was loving hip hop before loving hip hop. Right, like you know, right, right. Yeah, and it was funny because I was y'all. I'm sure y'all saw the Jim Jones interview with Flex. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Jim said that was his idea. Oh yeah, yeah. That yo, that that messed me up right there. And, I'm but, looking like what? It, it, oh, but his paper. I mean, he didn't get the, the contract. Yeah, right. something happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that that yeah. go back to the business. You got to right. have your business right. Yeah. Yeah, man, cause uh, one that's one thing I'm learning, and I I've, I've been learning this a long time ago. You can't sit here and say uh, all right, like Jim Jones was on Love and Hip Hop, you know, oh Jim Jones fall off, he got to be on Love and Hip Hop. No, yeah. he created the joint. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be quick to say somebody fell off. You don't never know what they doing. Yeah. I found that out because I was looking at a special one time, and it was Tone Lope was on there. Um, what's her name? Uh, Roxanne Shante, 
you know, the dark mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah. A couple of them. Rome. Yeah, that's when she got, you know. She Alexa. got a movie coming out, too. Listen, and then they, and the whole documentary was about, like, what they doing now. Mm-hmm. They was eating. And if you would have came to me and told me, Tone look, didn't fall off, <laughs> I would have punched you in the face. Because you would have been lying to me. Yeah. Tone up to a bunch of But words. Exactly, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, so, yeah. basically what I'm saying is, uh, it's not it's not a major point of issue, but look, don't be quick to talk about who fell off and who doing this and who that. Right. Because people be behind the scenes getting that bread, man. Yeah. Yeah. What you think? Look, you thought Nori was gone, didn't you? Well, yeah, Nori, <laughs> Nori was gone. I'm, like, I'm happy for Listen, him. You know, he, no, he, he, so he people didn't realize Nori was doing a bunch of reggaeton. And a bunch of yeah, he was. He was. I remember. Yeah, he killed that reggaeton. Right? Yeah, he kind of yeah. created it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. he kind of yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And then now he got the uh, drink champs, and now they on now they on reboot yeah. TV. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I but I bet that. you if you took said Bron Noriega name up in that dry spot where we ain't hear from you, yeah. what Noriega? They, they didn't fell off. Uh-huh. You be arguing with a young boy. They didn't fell off. They wasn't nobody. Yeah. Or the young boys didn't hear about tell, fell off. Yeah. Tell, 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 tell Noriega that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him we're puff drinking on champagne, talking about take that, take that, take that money to the bank. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Nori funny. <laughs> and then, he, then he teamed up with the DJ. What's the boy DJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ FM. Yeah. And you know they got they gotta have a business somewhere along the line. They got their business straight, man. Yeah, no, you they know, they, they rock with Puff now. They so, business yeah. definitely straight, but that just goes to show, right? So I do podcasts too, and I just want to keep it hundred. A lot of black folks don't necessarily listen to podcasts. Right. We, right. we, we, we well, they listen, get into it now though. Get into it now. With, with the, uh, but I was little, I was man. on her also, but we listen to hip hop. Podcast. We listen to comedy podcasts and some other, maybe some political podcasts. But it's a great medium for a lot yeah. of us to get into. We got a podcast too, but we—I don't know—we we allowed to talk about that job. I'm gonna ask you when I get a chance. Why can't you talk about your podcast? I don't know. You, get your you know what? Get your business right. Yeah, you gotta get your business right first. But you, we got a podcast, and we and we in the app, and we on the major outlets, but we ain't gonna talk about that right about that. We, yeah. we gonna, gonna not yet, I'm yeah. gonna talk to them about that. Because like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Well, you, y'all both are artists, too. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Even I'm though you say you're not an artist. No, I'm, artist, I'm, I'm, I'm artist, artist at heart. heart. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I started out, I used to, you know, spit and all that. And then, oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Because that was an issue I wanted to About the, uh, you know, since I've been doing this, it's been a couple months now. And we having a strange problem of people that's been in the business way longer than us, and I got a problem with them sending their music in and edit it. But I'm like, when we was get, when we was going in the studio, I was a young boy, I was a uh, vice president in A&R and Suspense Recorder. Remember that, Kevin? Yeah. And I used to, uh, this when that tapes was out, this how long wow. it was. I did not leave the studio. I repeat, Artists, listen to what I'm saying. I did not <laughs> leave the studio. I was in early 20s. I did not leave the studio unless I had my dirty version, my clean version, and my instrumental. Let me say that again. That's I did all. not leave the studio without my dad tape, without my dirty version, my clean version, and my instrumental. Now tell them why you did that though. Because I was thinking bigger. I think like, oh, this, this is why I did it. If this dirty version pop off and somebody asks me to turn this clean version, I don't gotta go back to the studio or chase down the um engineer them. I got it right here. Now, if somebody asks me to do a show, I got my instrumentals. How do you leave out of a studio? Doug gave us a prime example. I mean, of course, different circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yo, yeah. get y'all, get y'all stuck. Don't leave them studios until them, them engineers and them editing people get y'all. What y'all pay for, man? Ain't no coming back tomorrow and all that, man. We need this before we leave. I might not be living tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's how I look, look at stuff. And you gotta treat it like <laughs> you know business. I mean? again. It's the music business. Like you know, just thinking one way is not going to get you out there. Just because you got a hot song on the internet or something like that, if you want to get it to other platforms, you got to be prepared for it. It's business, you it's know. Business, man. That's well, think about it like this: your music, right, is intellectual property. It's an asset, right. It's something that can be monetized. Passed on to your uh, kids. Right. right. I mean, think about Michael Jackson's family. Now, Mike's the exception, but his music, all those masses he owned are assets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the artist got to think like, this is an asset. This is, it may not have any market value right now. Right. But I don't know what's going to in the future. Right. Yeah. It blow up. You now, just tangible, put that thing in the safe, man. Now, how many, how many, how many dad tapes did Jay-Z probably lose over the years? That if somebody found them right now, 
yeah. in order to light. I mean, there, there will be some licensing issues, of course. Yeah. But you could put them joints out on the internet yeah. real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And it would make some bread. Yeah. A, right. And it yeah. took Jay a long time to get on. Like, people talk about Jay Z in 1986, reasonable doubt. No, Jay Z was 88, 89. Yeah. With a wine and sofa. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. when you think about it, this dude has been out just as long as. Big Daddy Kane, KRS-One, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the likes. So you right. find some of his old stuff when he wasn't popping. This has been a long time yeah. to get on. Shoot, my fast he, rap. He might buy it off you. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> the fast rap he used to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are no overnight successes. Yeah, no, and, no, and, no, and, no, and no. that's what a lot of these, but yeah. you know what, a lot of these young artists don't get that. They don't see the years behind the work. They just see the personal team. Indie Radio, every Saturday. I'm hearing some artists talk about now they know they worth, so they don't want to do nothing for free. And I'm like, just like you said, they don't do open mics. Man, you need to go everywhere you possibly can and showcase your work. Right. I mean, Biggie, Biggie was giving out his CDs for free. He said because he wants everybody to know he's hot. Yeah, and that's the fastest way to get it to him. Yeah, you know, so yeah. to go Puff out there, and yeah. Run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Puff Puff saw it. his first album. Yeah, Big was giving it out. Wow. He was in Brooklyn giving tapes out of him. He said, the Puff found out, like, what you doing? Like, <laughs> you know, he's 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 yeah, yeah. But people yeah. don't realize, man, like, if you if you got that buzz, yeah. that movement, yeah. that push, that's worth more than a dag on stage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love, you know, I love Dame Dash, right? I think Dame is a genius, but he'll even tell you that he was a bit hot-headed, a bit arrogant years ago. But he talk that's all the time. Merch, yeah, merch, yeah, 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 and merch, right? Yeah. So, and, and you know, it's crazy. Like when we all on the outside looking in to like to them stories of the you know the Rockefeller days, and they always made Dean uh, seem to be the bad guy. One, two, they always made it seem to be bad because he was trying to do so much stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But look at how today is now. You gotta like even with the three sixty, you gotta do a lot of stuff. To really get your bread, you just gotta keep your overhead low. You can't just yeah. just go one. You know what I mean? You gotta be business minded about it. But they was always fought. Dave was trying to do too much, or they, and he would say, "I'm, I'm getting um, Armadale and this and all this stuff." But now his model that they was he was doing back in the day fits today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fits today, and that's how you gotta do it. I'm not telling nobody to do too much, but you gotta utilize all these outlets that you can. No but Dave was able to do that because he had qualified people around him. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Biggs was qualified to run Rockefeller while he, while Dave was running Rockefeller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So you gotta build, you gotta build that team. Yeah. You gotta build that team. Yeah, and that, that that leads to what I was saying about how you gotta have that one man or that from couple people that like, like uh, Baby and Slum. You don't see nothing from Slum. Never. Uh, yeah. Dame and and uh, Biggs. Yeah. Biggs. Was handling that business, yeah, and now yeah. that social media is, is popping so much, you start to hear them interviews like, "What? Yeah. You was doing this? What you was doing all that time? Yeah. You was doing the marketing and this and okay, y'all wasn't just spending this money and and tricking and, and having this jewelry." Well, it was. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they were. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. 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 But you know what I'm trying to say? Like they was really handling their business, man. We only seen the part of, we seen the visual of the flash part. Yeah. You know something that Dame said uh, that, that, that uh, stuck in my head? He said, Dame has said he used to spend, like he'd get an artist, he would spend $10,000, I'm not going to say a day, he said a day a week, something like that, a month, $10,000 a month just to have the uh, press or whatever, that's what they call like the press. PR. PR, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Spend $10,000 a month just for PR. Like you, you my artist. I'm spending ten thousand on your PR. He's following you around. They snap print. They put it in the paper. And he said that's bringing you a hundred grand, just to have you, you know, just to have you in, in front of them cameras and in them newspapers and in these blogs all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with this social media now, it's the same thing. Yeah. You ain't gotta really spend that much money. I'm let. I'm not sure, but you don't have to spend that much money. You got your own cameras. You got these phones, and you got. 
the share button is vicious now. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can share the joint, put share. That you got four or five options of other media outlets that you uh, sharing this this joint on. It, matter of fact, I hate to get on subject, but listen. If you got a homie or friend or family member that's in some type of business or entertainment and all that, and you can't move your thumb and, and push the share button and maybe move it four more times to share it on some other media outlets, you ain't real. You don't need to be their friend. Just get off social media and, join <laughs> and sit down. You know what I mean? Then you got, then y'all don't know, I don't know how smart y'all is, but you get a, you put something up there. I got, not me, but I may say about, unless you put a book up there. I seen that y'all viewed it 153 times. Y'all viewed it 153 times, but y'all only liked it two times or four times or something, and two shares. So why would you? So, <laughs> why would your friends? It was just these people in your social media, you know, little uh, group. They gonna view your joint. You they man. They gonna view your joint 153 times, like it twice, one share. But if you put you up there punching somebody in their face, you gonna get. 500 likes, yeah. 3,000 shares, and everybody gonna comment on it, and they gonna be your friend. Well, there's a, there is a reason for that. Let me know, brother. Um, <laughs> all the social media is basically Facebook dominates, right? Because you talked about Instagram earlier. Right. Facebook is an algorithm on them, right? So, but to your point, you are right. But people will like that, that fist punch video faster. Yeah. So it shows that it's relevant. So what Facebook does, they don't show all your stuff to everybody. You can have a thousand friends on Facebook. On right. Facebook, they only showing it to about maybe fifty people okay. at a time. But then if they see that post is hot, they not let it rip to maybe five hundred people. Wow! And so you gotta always be playing that game. Like I'll be honest, I think artists should also spend money advertising on these Shh. on these social media platforms. Yeah, it's cheap as well. Even not just artists, business owners in general. Yeah, yeah. Man. Um, it's cheap as hell, and the way you can target folks is crazy. So if my man was talking about getting artists, um, getting shoes in Atlantic City, I think that's what he said. I would run an ad targeted at people in, in, in Atlantic City before, so they can see it. Right, before that's you get possible. there, yeah. Right, yeah. 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 And then yeah, yeah. Like the, the promoters will see it possibly, and then they'll start reaching out for shows possibly. You know, it's right. like any ad campaign. It's a risk involved, but that's one way to be smart about it when you ain't got to be going back and forth to AC trying to build a relationship. Yeah. yeah. All right, my last question for you, Kamar, before you roll out of here. The simplest way you can tell someone how to start investing. The simplest way. Um, so if you work at a job and you have what's called a 401k plan, you might hear a term called 403B. Um, start with that if you work a job. Okay. You, you can take the money right out of your check and you never see it. Yeah, you won't miss um, it. The, big, the biggest problem is a lot of people don't realize cats got what's what I call a spender disease. Yeah. They love to spend, mm -hmm. right? They, they don't care. They get, they get some money in their pocket and they hide the track and they're ready, they ready to go. So I, I would take the money first. If you don't have a 401k, set up like a, an account with like a Capital One. Have the money come out the day you get paid so it don't sit in there too long and just start taking 20 grams, $25, $50 a week because I get hit with it. Or I can't invest, or investing is only for rich people. That's all lies. Yeah. Right? You really only need about twenty five dollars a month. A check or something. Every yeah, check. Yeah. yeah to, to get going. And if you do that, and you develop a habit of saving slash investing on a regular basis, you'd be surprised what can happen. Yeah. I had a lady. Um, I never met her, but I had a lawyer um, who was closing out her estate, so I had to go back through and catalog all her stuff. So this this lady brought stock. I forget what stock it was. Um, systematically, monthly, since 1968 up wow. until now, and she had over a million dollar portfolio. And you talk, you're talking about maybe 100, 200 dollars a month. So, so with the, with the savings right. and the stock price went up, right? She made a man. So how old was she when she? I'm not sure. I'm not. When she died, I think she was maybe 70s. Okay. So I, I guess you can say she started in her 40s. Because this happened maybe about five years ago. Wow, about thirty years. Yeah, and it's never too late, man. You, you can you can start early. The other thing, and I the earlier you, know, you start, the better. Yes, absolutely. Now, what would you say about people uh, putting uh, investing money safe for their kids? Like you, you got uh, two two years old, three years. Old. Would you 
would you uh, advise someone to invest some? Like, I don't know how you would do it, but like put something up for them for well, college or something. I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna backtrack on it because I was okay. about to say something okay. depressing related. To okay. Because right? I get a lot of people to say, I want my children to learn about money. Yeah, yeah. How can I teach my children about money? I tell them, you learn about money. All our kids learn from us, they sponges. Right. And then you can start having a conversation. They see you on that computer with them right. stocks and going into this bank and they ask you, what, what you doing here? And yeah. that be your, yeah. your daughter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, investing isn't as hard as mainstream media makes it out to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Kill you know, got on make, nights. Make you think like you got to be rich, huh? <laughs> I, I got on nights. What you got on? You got on uh, work boots. Came straight from work. I mean, tell y'all that. Y'all think I'll be grinding. We've <laughs> <laughs> been up since uh, well, well, my 5 is, Go ahead. <laughs> we, we can go anywhere. Any bar, any school. Cats got on Jordans. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not, why not own some, some stock at Nike? Right. Now I thought. Now I thought of that. Why not own a piece of that business that takes so much money out of our community? That's crazy that you said that. No money back to us at all. That makes sense. You, I know some people they get two, three pair when they come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get two and take Brand that other five hundred dollars and <laughs> they get, they get fresh. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it invested. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, they can do that. Buy one pair and buy one stock. Just start with one stock. But, okay. Um, now, now. So, but I'm gonna answer good, question, good, right? good. So, if you know your kids like. Nikes and they like to get fresh, or Jordans they like to get fresh. Buy a, buy a share of stock. You can do that. Now, now I'm a, now I'm gonna take the interview back full circle. Now, is there any uh, way to uh, how can I put this? Those companies is well known. We don't know what own them. What about investing like stocks into like black owned businesses and stuff like that? Is that something that goes on or that's a nah? Joke? It is. <laughs> like I don't know if I can say it, but I'm gonna say Radio One. We'll start about black. Radio. Allegedly, let's say go ahead. I guess I'll look. We we measure it. We just get measure it. We're good. Yeah, but that was started by Kathy Hughes. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, a right. sister, right? Yeah, we will started by Kathy Hughes. Now that that company is publicly traded, right? Right. So anybody can buy that company. Matter okay. Of fact, they got to deal with the TV One partnership. They do work with um with Comcast, and I've been meaning to do a whole list of black publicly traded. Right, companies. and I'm glad you put that up. It's not a whole lot of them. Yeah, and I'm glad you put that up because I read an, or, an article about her, and she had got turned down by like a crazy, like a crazy amount. I, I, I just want to put a number out there to say 13 banks before that one bank told her a year, because they like a, a sister she trying to get her the right up in this. You crazy? Mm -hmm. They give you no money with this hair green scheme. But um, I've said that to say, uh, whatever you do, man, you gotta be persistent and you gotta do your research. And it's easy to do research now with uh, um, the internet. I ain't, I ain't giving nobody no plugs. <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> Say, no, I'm joking. But again, you got you to do your research, man. You got to do your research, but you also got to understand um, how the players, how the players move. Right. Right? We all talked about chess and checkers earlier, right? Right. So banks are not really in the business of, they're in the business of lending money, but they're not in the business of taking no risk. So when they, when they lend money, they don't want to take a risk. They almost want a, a short shot. Right. And so a lot of people think the first place they're going to go to raise some money is a bank. Or well, the first place you probably should go is to your family and friends. Yeah, tell, tell the listeners your name, man. We got to get up out of here, man. All right, Kamari Ellis, the Finance Rebel. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Y'all was tuned in to Indie Radio Live sure. on WPPM LP, Philadelphia, 106.5 FM. You can tune into the uh, Indie Bowl Radio Show every Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. You know what I mean? Oh. This is not a test. What you are witnessing is live radio 106.5 FM. And this is the Indie Bowl Radio Show with your host, Mitch Barnes.